Hello, this is Victoria Wynn. I'm gonna do my very best to make this a fun video and a challenging for me video, but not a tedious video for you to watch. So here's why I say that. I have given myself a challenge and I know a lot of you have mentioned um, enjoying seeing me struggle. Just kidding. You enjoy seeing me challenge myself and then off the cuff, just create something um, hopefully magical. So I created this orca last week. And these are kaleidoscope flakes. I've just painted white underneath and then sprinkled the kaleidoscope flake right there. And this is just a uh, black acrylic and I've done a little accent work with just a touch of white to create that gray. And there's our orca. So right now at winmodernart.com we have a huge 40 percent off sale and i thought it would be fun that all the mini classes that i shared this week are using at least one of the colors that i call unappreciated colors like you just don't know how amazing they are typically because i haven't created a video to really show you um, what they might look like when used with black or white. And uh, so it's time to give some of the unappreciated powders some love with a really beautiful 17-inch uh, orca that I have here. So here, the, the colors that I am thinking, plus you'll see there's a new one in here that's not even launched yet. But so this color is called Firefly. It is blue with specks of teal. It's a color shifting powder, but a really subtle color shift. Chrome is just as it sounds and highly metallic, kind of like a black smoky gray. I really love chrome. Cosmic Rain is just a shade off of chrome. As you can see, it has just a touch of blue. So it's like a slate blue metallic. This is called Night Tide. As you can see, it has a strong color shift. Kind of a blue to gold to a touch of soft green mostly golds though um, night night tide this is a brand new product that's um, at the time of making this video january 28th it is not even on the website quite yet oh my goodness so this is a new color of kaleidoscope flake the color is called manhattan as you can see why it looks like it's just lit up by bright lights and romance. <laughs> so that's Manhattan. Now, I really want to play with Manhattan um, kaleidoscope flakes today. So I did add it here to my um, palette of potentials. That's what we shall call, call these here. I just got some black paint, got some white paint. All right, so to be frank, that's all I know. That is all I know right now is that I think it might be fun to paint an orca whale using some blues and metallics and the Manhattan Kaleidoscope flakes the same way that I use the Rainbow Mist Kaleidoscope flakes is my plan. So that means that all the, these other powders and blues are gonna somehow go onto the rest of our orca's body. Maybe we'll make the, the boyfriend. <laughs> Here's the girlfriend, she's kind of glam. Maybe we make the boyfriend with some blacks, slate blues, chrome. Maybe that's gonna be the, the plan. It's kind of uh, beautiful and elegant and maybe a bit more of a masculine look. I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I'm just like throwing stuff out there. I'm going to leave this one here so I can um, remember where to, I'm just going to freehand. So I kind of remember the design of the orca because that is an area that's really important right off the bat that I do not... Um, paint over in any kind of dark color. So I'm just trying to think here what's more logical. If I want to start with the black or start with the white, I think I'm going to start with the black 
it sounds dangerous, but I believe that's how I did it with our other Orca over there. Only going to use this fatter, um, wider sponge brush on the areas that I know there won't be any white anywhere near because you can, you can, you just really can't clean up black off of an area that you want to be white. Uh, black is just such, such a strong color. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of time, only um, use the sponge brush, but again, I'm only gonna use it in the parts that I'm, I know for sure that I'm not gonna have any white because the sponge brush is quick, quick, quick. So I really do like using it. So I'm looking over here. Here's the one where I'm trying to match for the white markings. Um, I talked in my last video about uh, just how much I, I love orcas. I think they've really had a, a rough go, right? With, you know, being at wild animal parks, marine parks, and such an incredible animal that has really sacrificed a lot for us humans to learn a lesson about um, taking care of our, our animals a little or a lot better. So I have so much respect for orcas, AKA killer whales, and I uh, have a lot of dreams um, with me in them and orcas. So we're gonna paint orcas today, or one orca. All right, now I'm getting a little too close, a little too close for comfort. So I'm gonna start working on um, that, a smaller brush now. Whoop. I'm just going to get the sides a bit. These 17 inch orcas can be found on winmodernart.com. And we have a new tab or, you know, button on the menu bar. It's called wooden cutouts. Um, and engravings, and you can see the latest, the latest wooden artistry that we have available. And you can also um, custom order. Just send us an email at orders at winmodernart.com. And just ask us if we can do it, and we will tell you. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's um, do this beautiful orca justice. And I might be quiet for a minute here just so I can really focus and do this well. Sometimes I can paint and talk and other times I just need to take a minute, a moment of silence to uh, to create, especially when it comes to this orca. I mean, there's a few reasons. One, we pick out high grade um, wood, so it can get costly to cut these. But the other one that I would say is even most, more important is that I really want to do this orca justice. It really represents fortitude to me, this beautiful animal, perseverance, patience for humans. So I just want to be mindful as I'm painting this and just kind of honor the amazing animal that this is. Okay. I like to keep my brush stroke um, right going the same direction as best I can. It's a little hard when we're making, 
you know, circular curves, curved lines and well, you know what I mean? But um, also you can, I mean, I'm doing this freehand, but you can certainly just draw with a pencil. So you have that as a guide. Okay. This one looks a little di bit different than his counterpart, but I think that's going to be okay. It can have a little bit of uh, personality, be a little bit different than, than the girl over there. So they both have a bit of their personality, but essentially orcas have their this a white patch of some sort right here, and then what I will call their chin. <laughs> I really do not know what the term is. So I have a brush here that's concerning me. Um, it's got like this long, let's see. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it, but it's a long piece of hair there. And when we're drawing, painting, we we need to be perfectionist a bit. That does not work for me. Okay, again, I'm gonna get quiet for a moment here, just while I. get the shape how I would like it. Again, not a bad idea to draw it with a pencil. <laughs> um, not a bad idea at all. But the good news is to um, have their markings be just a touch different from one another. Um, I'm kind of okay with that because I'm going to create male and female here just in Vic's world. Um, so they can be a touch different. Here's what we got so far. They look a little different and that is looking pretty cute actually. They're gonna make an adorable couple. Okay. Now I've gotta figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> this was the easy part. Now I've gotta figure out what powders and how to apply them when my paint is already drying so fast. When I use Floetrol mixed in with my paint, um, I have plenty of time to toy around with the powders, but this is already drying pretty quickly. So, I gotta figure out what I wanna do here. Maybe um, brush a little of the Floetrol in the areas that, I'm gonna put her over here. Um, in the areas that I wanna add some powders, plus what powders do I wanna use anyways? I don't even know. So this is Chrome. Chrome might be really pretty. But what about Firefly? And where would I even put it? And in what way? Like, so with her, um, I hand painted, you know, kind of shadowing and highlights. Well, maybe I do that, um, but with powders and good old Floetrol here. Also, real quick, just to show you what I'm doing, I'm putting some water in this cup just so I don't ruin my foam brush because it is just sitting here drying out and that 
is no good. No need to be wasteful. So that's just gonna sit over there. Um, because our paints do dry quite quickly, I'm gonna get this covered and set aside just so you kind of know what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm just gonna cover it with a basic takeout food lid. Um, so I'm thinking the best bet is to, you know what, I'm gonna leave the black on this paintbrush and pour a little Floetrol into a cup, just a touch. And then I'm gonna brush on the highlights and I'm gonna take a deep breath is what I'm gonna do because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. Basically, I'm gonna try and mimic the, the female orca over there with some highlights on the back. And uh, then I'm just gonna sprinkle some powder and hope for the best. So the Lux Metallic Powders, we have three different kinds, uh, three different kinds of Lux Powders, and this one I'm about to use next is a metallic powder. It is does not have a color shift. It's like a what you see is what you get, and it's a high, high um, metallic. One of my tricks is to mix it into paint because um, it gives such a beautiful metallic look. And it's a fine enough powder that you can mix it right into your um, acrylic or your resin. And uh, then we have Lux powders that are color shifting. That would be like Firefly. It's dark, um, kind of like smoky color as a base, but then it shifts blues, purples, and teals. And then again, this is Night Tide. Night Tide. On this lid, you can really see the color shift, blue to golds. Let's grab a lid and just take a look at Firefly for a moment and do the same lid thing so we can um, see how it shows up, the color shift. Let's see, oh, we'll go this way. Do you see it? It's like lighting up. A little like electricity. So it'll be dark and then it just does this beautiful um, like electricity kind of look. You'll see when we put it on a dark background um, what it's about to do. I think that's what I'm going to use right here is the firefly it's so beautiful i i love i love chrome too so who knows so i'm just going to sprinkle it on right in the areas that i added that floetrol so floetrol is works as a great adherent now hopefully the rest of my black has already dried Otherwise, I'm going to get my Firefly powder in other areas that I don't want. Like right here. Do you see how I think it was still a little wet there? So. Let me figure out how to, how am I going to wipe that down? I think I'll get some black paint and, sorry, right through the camera white uh, black paint and just see if I can move it around a bit at least make it a little more subtle okay I think I kind of See, in these videos, I always want to do them like all at once, but really you should wait till your black is completely dry because once you add powders, 
you know, it's going to stick to other areas. Like my flow to my flow troll trick works great. But the thing is, is that the powders will stick to paint as well if it's still wet. So that is what happened. But hey, I'm showing you how to fix it in case you too sprinkle in areas you didn't mean to sprinkle. So remember, I'm going in one direction, not like up and down and like a, you know, chaotic stroke. Just for me, I go right to left. You could go the other way too, like that. Whatever's more comfortable for you. Whatever's relaxing and enjoyable and fun. Well, I'm kind of liking, kind of liking Firefly right there. Yet, I really want to play with the other colors. <laughs> um, oh, the decisions. What if I added a little bit of Night Tide on the top of our Firefly powder right there? Like, just at the top. Like another, an accent on top of an accent. Let's see what that does. Okay, do you see that little bit of white? That's the Floetrol. And I'm just gonna add a touch. Let's see, a touch of Night Tide on the top. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay. This is working out. Do a little tapping. That's a pretty neat effect. It's like an ombre effect from green to soft blue to gold to dark blue. The color shift, that is so neat. Well, it's always nice when an experiment goes well. <laughs> I never know. I never, never know. I can hope. <laughs> um, but that's about it. Okay, I'm going to do um, a little highlight at the top of... Well, that was lovely. Uh, the, the tip of the fin here. I did not mean to get all of that flow troll right there. There we go. There's a little baby wipe wipe off some excess. So I'm going to do the fin and I'm just taking more of the firefly and here we go. Just go real slow. It's usually really pretty if you start, um, let's see, how do I describe this? Like, so your powder on the, at least on the fin kind of comes out. So it's not just a a straight line like in this case so I start just a little bit here and then I let it go all to a different part of the fin so basically like kind of that little triangle typically is super pretty on things like fins so let's do the same effect because that was pretty magical I'm adding a little bit of flow troll right here just a touch so we can get some more of that night tide powder. Uh oh, I spilt it in other areas I didn't want it. Just a little touch. And I do want to wipe off ah, the area where I got a little bit of, I'm just using paint. Kind of move it around, move it off of there. There we go. That is super interesting, guys. That effect is really interesting to me. It's looking super pretty. Really happy with that. With the night tide mixing um, with with Firefly.
Okay, here we go. I have not used Chrome. Dang it. Where would I put it? I've got a theme going. I, I'm just gonna keep running with my theme. Chrome might not get um, to be the, the big feature today. It looks like so far it's Firefly and Night Tide and the Manhattan Kaleidoscope um, flakes. So I'm just gonna get a totally fresh brush for the white areas of our whale because for me to think I could truly clean a brush in this short period of time and get get all the black off it's just unlikely and why stress myself out when I can just grab another brush so again I really like to show these in all in one video to you um, like non-edited all the way through so you can see the mistakes you can see how i work through my problems it's just i like to really really keep it real but with that means i have to rush certain steps <laughs> because otherwise you'll be waiting for my dry time as well so in this case i normally really wouldn't be painting the white right now because i've got some wet black paint right there and all it takes is me accidentally um, touching my white brush onto the black paint and then I'm going to be streaking black through this white area and so I'm having to be really careful and the only reason really I'm doing white is just because just as a backdrop to the Manhattan flakes um, It's, it's just a test. It doesn't mean that it has to be done this way. I just think that having white as the background of any flakes or anything that I use right here will help to make it clear that this is a, an orca and it's gonna bring out the white. You know, like the lightness of whatever powder or flake that you use. Again, really good idea to not do this when your black is still drying. Oops, there we go. But I really want to show you the whole thing right now. So this white is really drying fast, so I'm going to have to add a little Floetrol to help the flakes to stick. I'm a little quiet. I know it. It's because I'm highly focused on this really beautiful looking orca here. He deserves a moment for me to focus. <laughs> okay. I've got our white in there. Let's see. I think I might move my tray around for my convenience. Here's our flow trowel. I'm just gonna do one section at a time with the flow trowel and the white marking. Okay. Truly, if there is some black streaking, it's not really the end of the world because you are adding the kaleidoscope flakes. If, if you're following what I'm doing right now, then you're adding these anyways. I love, love this new color. You can use these as stars in a night sky. It's so gorgeous like that.
or in my case, a really gorgeous orca. <laughs> There's always that option. Also, stunning geodes and for coasters and trays. I'm going slow as I touch the edge, get the, the edge of the white. And the reason is because, again, my paint isn't completely dry. The black isn't completely dry, and I don't want my flakes to be sticking all over onto the that black area. So I'm just being extra, extra careful. Okay, now I'm gonna use gravity and tap and have it go this way. Use gravity to my benefit. Wow, that is one fancy, beautiful orca. I will go back and get the flakes off that got into other areas, but for right now, let's move on to this part of his markings. Well, I still got black wet paint over there. Not quite dry. Sometimes I really, I must have really glopped it on in that particular area. I was pretty serious in that moment. Pretty passionate, evidently. Okay. So again, this is just Floetrol. Works as a great adherent for things like powders and kaleidoscope flakes. Here we go. The kaleidoscope flake, the bag that they come in, these last so long. Um, you will be able to create so many projects with the, the one um, bag. Do I want you to buy tons? Of course, but realistically, um, one bag will go quite, quite a while. Okay. Tap. I'll clean up the edges. But first, I think I want this black to be lower. Now, how the heck am I going to fix that? Hold on. It's bugging me. Well, I guess let's just, I'll do this area that's kind of like the eye marking. But then I really want more black right here. That's going to be an interesting thing to work on and to work out and to fix. <laughs> but let me quickly do this one marking. And then let's see how uh, let's see how uh, this goes for me. <laughs> That's kind of a crazy idea to have already put the flakes on and go, mm, yeah, I want less. I'm like, what the heck am I thinking? But I just, I won't be happy unless I get, get it right. So, and when I say get it right, I mean in my head, right? Because we all, we're artists. We do it however. Whatever feels good to us. All right. So hopefully this helps you to see. <laughs> Basically all I'm doing is I've got a baby wipe here and I'm cleaning the brush and then I'm wiping the area that I want to put black paint on. And I've got the sparkles on the brush, I'm just wiping them off and then going back in, pulling off a few more 
flakes in the area. I just felt like there shouldn't be so much white because it's not the flakes I don't love. It's that I feel like he needs to have a little more of the black and less of that white marking right there. So that's actually what's going on here. I'm really liking the flakes a lot, but I want the shape to be how I have it in my head. And I'm not quite there. Okay. So just try if if you do what I do and you're like, oh, I got to remove some of the flakes because I want a different shape of something, then just get as many as you can off. So that's what I've done. I've got as many as I can off just in this area right here. I just want a little more black. Here we go. This is a crazy idea. Okay. It's coming together. Well, after this dries, I can always go back and give it another coat. But for right now, I just want to get that, that layer off so I could get a little more of black on its face. I don't know why. <laughs> if you're wondering, hey, Victoria, why is that? Uh, I don't know. It just feels right <laughs> to have a little more black in that area. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at my orca here as a whole. It's always a good idea to step back, um, turn your piece of art upside down. It's a, a trick a lot of artists do, including myself, which is to look at your art from all different angles. And I'll typically see different things that you might want to do or change or maybe you'll extra love it who knows but it is a really good idea to give it a glance from different angles so that is exactly what I'm going to do clear off my workspace put my brush in some water so I don't dry it out here we go So I'm just stepping back. Okay, here's what I'm seeing. I think this is what's bothering me is that, so this is a color thing. You know, I'm all about color. Background in design and background in color psychology and just straight up crazy artist. So here's what I'm seeing that's not working for me. I couldn't figure it out at first. Um, my night tide color on the top, I love it just like this. But once I get the silver involved, it's like the gold isn't working with the silver. Because when I, <laughs> I was doing it and I didn't have the kaleidoscope flakes down yet, and now that I do, this particular orca has more of a, a color palette with silvers and blacks and blues and the uh, night tide, it shifts to a touch of gold. I can see a little green in there too. So I think what's gonna make me happy, guess who's coming back? Chrome, <laughs> yay! I do get to use chrome, dang it. I'm very excited about this. Okay, I think that's gonna be the answer. It's gonna, it's gonna pull it all together. So, let me move this out of the way. This silver tray, driving my eyes crazy. I think I've got too much silver going on or something. Ah, that feels so much better to my eyes. 
<laughs> okay. Yours too? <laughs> Here we go. We're going to do a little uh, cosmetic updating on the fin. Okay, I'm feeling very excited about this, as you probably hear in my tone. Cleaning off my brush in the water. I'm going to use Floetrol, and I'm going to go right, right over the parts that I think are clashing with the Manhattan Flakes, just right over, like so, and then clean my brush. I could use a little more right here. Clean my brush again. And then I'm gonna do some on the top fin right here. So I actually really love this whole idea. What I need to do is do like a gold um, for the white areas or probably Sinatra powder would be amazing just so all the colors work. But I really, really like Night Tide being um, right next to Firefly. So, clearly I need to take a breath and slow down because I lost my chrome. Here we go. Okay, wish me luck. Here we go, right there. Let me do it upside down a bit so I can have gravity work for me and go this direction. Oh, that's looking good. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, here we go. Now, that there. Love it. Okay, it's making a lot more sense to me. Wow, chrome sprinkled a touch into Firefly. Who would have thought about that? Well, maybe you guys have. I have not. And I am really, really loving it. Okay, I got a little bit of chrome on my black right here because I was trying to aim for the camera to show you and realized um, I'm dripping in the wrong areas, <laughs> sprinkling. So all I'm doing is taking my black with my brush and just giving it a little wipe down with some black and it's looking great. All right, well, this, this guy is really coming together. Feeling so much better about the whole situation here. So I do want to say, though I'm not completely done, I still want to thank you for joining me in the journey of me taking on a challenge um, without much of a plan. All I knew is I'm painting an orca today and I'm gonna use one of the colors in our unappreciation sale. And now Firefly and Chrome feel extremely appreciated. <laughs> They were the feature to our 17 inch orca. Okay. Let me show you close up and then let's see if we need anything, oops, to be done. Okay. I think we're gonna give, you know what I would love? I would love if I had tuxedo powder. So tuxedo black 
I almost want to, so I get more of a blended look right there, but with a powder, not with paint. I might have it right here. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Dun, dun, dun. Let's thank Cassie. She put this little cut together for me and I just happen to have so what I'm going for is in this area right through here, I think I want it to be more of a fade, but I'm going to fade with powder, not paint. And it is called Tuxedo Black and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is a jet, jet black. And I think it's going to do what I'm hoping with this little blended effect that I'm going for. Yep. Just tapping off any excess. I'm liking it a lot, a lot. Okay. So right now you see brush strokes, but I will be doing a top coat of Lux Water Effects. Holy crap, I'm getting an idea. Um, let me back this up. I'm getting crazy ideas, guys. Calm down, Vic. Okay, I think... Oh, I could add the color of water effects called All Lit Up. That would be amazing. Okay, <laughs> I have got to clean up my workspace. It's getting messy. I am constantly cleaning up my workspace because it can get um, a little too crazy for me with stuff everywhere. I'm gonna add a little, a little tuxedo black right here. And then I'm gonna move on to my other idea. There we go. Okay, it's it's coming together. It's coming together. But I've got other thoughts. Okay, now I'm going to look around for the water effects in the color called All Lit Up. And let me get... I don't want to accidentally make a mess on all my powders and kaleidoscope flakes, so I'm moving everything out of my way. Once I start busting out the water effects, things can get wild. So, so wild that we need to bring the tray back. All right, washing brushes again, organizing the space just a bit. And now let me see where I've got some all lit up water effects. I think I just found it. Okay. So I've got mine in a container here. By the way, on occasion, on occasion, we can sell by the gallon. It's not often because we run out of water effects so much. Um, but when we do sell by the gallon, they come in four of these huge containers. And, uh, and I sell it at half the price. So with, um, 
Oh, so in order to do that, email orders at winmodernart.com and just ask if by rare chance we have a whole gallon um, to sell at the half price. The, the pigment that makes like this bold phosphorescent color in our water effects, it's called All Lit Up, it settles sometimes if it's just sitting too long. Just stick a marble um, into your bottle and that will, that will give it a nice mix up. So it can be hard to see. Oh, I got a little black floaty in there. It can be hard to see with the camera, but uh, the phosphorescent this glowing effect that it has. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I really, I think our, um, I think our whale needs it. I think it'll be spectacular. Let's see. I'm organizing a little bit around here. Just trying to, um, Decide if I want to pour right out of that cup or that big. I think I'm going to use this and pour right here. If you can see the shimmer of the uh, that all lit up color and okay. I just need a Pause and ponder for just a moment here. Figure out how I'm going to go about this. And where exactly I want to pour. And if I pour too soon when things aren't dry, then the water effects is going to mix things up. And most of the time I do love that. But... I'm not sure about this time. Okay, so it's all ready to go. I'm just gonna go for it, guys. Wish me luck. I'm always blown away. I know it's my product, but no, seriously, like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Look at that glow. Now I'm going to do some on the tail or on the fin up here. to just let it um, use gravity just let things tilt on their own instead of using a brush or a stick to spread things out because this way I get such a nice uh, smooth finish so if I don't get a corner I don't like get out a brush I just pour just a touch out of the cup so I can keep that really beautiful finish going. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so maybe what I do for the rest is, I'm just gonna do some of its tail right here, um, is do clear. So like the top part, wow, it's just, it truly looks all lit up. It's incredible. Um, I love like that wave-like design that I did in it. Um, instead of just like a straight line, it's like got this beautiful wave. So maybe the rest um, will be in clear and 
so I can keep gorgeous like bluish purple on the top and then the clear over the kaleidoscope flakes <sighs> this video went long but holy crap it got exciting at least for me <laughs> I'm way excited okay I'm gonna get some water effects in clear and I'm gonna run with that idea let's see Okay, I think everything is dry enough that me adding clear water effects so soon, I think it's gonna be all right. As you can tell, I only sound probably 70% confident. <laughs> That's not that high of a percentage when we're talking about confidence, but you know, being an artist, there's risk and I haven't learned anything new or done anything fun um, that was really fun to me that it didn't have at least a little bit of risk. So I'm cleaning off my hands. Um, it's important to me to not get fingerprints or Manhattan flakes, you know, in areas that I don't want. Not that I couldn't fix it, but it's just better to start with clean hands. Whew, I gotta take a breath because <laughs> this is this is intense. Like I don't want to ruin my flakes. And okay, here I go. Okay, I didn't quite get everything. I'm going to go and lightly get a little bit more like that and right here. I missed a little tiny spot right here. I'm like, come on. Thankfully, this is, it is self-leveling. Um, but I do have to help it along by tilting a bit. So it's cloudy right now and it will dry clear. Some of my flakes are moving around, I can see. So I'm gonna have to go back and um, work on cleaning up some of my flakes. Oh my gosh, it's looking so amazing though. I definitely need baby wipe. Oh, I gotta level this too. There we go. Wow. Well, sometimes it takes me a while to work these things out and to get to the point that I'm happy. I am feeling it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna get a little bit over here that didn't get water effects um, in clear. And I think I'm going to want it a bit at this angle. Let's see. I like to use lids um, typically. But let's see if I have an extra lid. Um, just to give it the tiniest little tilt up. Found a little bubble. Go away, bubble. Okay. So just a little small lid can make such a nice difference. And we're trying to level things out. All right, I will of course share the video of um, and photos when he is completely dry, but look, the water effects dries quite quickly here in Utah, sometimes within hours. Um, I still, 
I still give it a solid 24, like before shipping. Um, we had, we're really dry air around here. Um, but I bet by tonight I could be taking photos because it'll be most likely all dry. Well, boy, am I excited that I thought at the last minute to add water effects right over those powders. Um, again, it's going to dry clear, so we're still going to see our kaleidoscope flakes in the Manhattan color. And it's, yes, 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 yes. And there's, there's the girlfriend over there thinking, why is he so shiny and <laughs> colorful? What the heck? It's just how it is in the world of nature. The male just seems to be, you know, got a whole lot of flair and fun <laughs> to the coloring. So, um, quick overview. 17 inch wooden orca with kaleidoscope flakes in brand new color, Manhattan. Used new Lux water effects in color all lit up is in this cup. Looks very unassuming right there. And then boom, you add it, especially to a dark pigment, whether it's resin or acrylic, it will light up just the same. And then I've also got chrome powder and firefly powders that are used in the fins and for some highlighting. So this was super fun. I really, really appreciate you guys joining me in this whole journey of creating beautiful orca. They deserve our respect and our love. So my salute to the male and female orca. Thanks for joining me. Victoria Wynn, winmodernart.com.